ओके सो आज हम जो है वो विल कंटिन्यू टॉकिंग अबाउट ऑपरेटर्स एंड रिव्यू सम मोर मैथमेटिक्स देन आई विल रिव्यू पॉस्ट थ्री एंड देन वी विल आल्सो स्टडी व्हाट वी कॉल ऑपरेटर फंक्शंस दैट जस्ट एज वी कैन डिफाइन फंक्शंस ऑन स्केलर्स फॉर एग्जांपल एक्सपोनेंशियल एक्स कॉज एक्स एक्सेट्रा or logarithm of x we can define operators of functions as well and there's one uh, important operator it's called trace operator we will introduce this one and uh, today we will also introduce qubit which is a uh, sort of uh, one of the fundamental thing that we uh, need uh, for quantum computers and actually also today i will start talking about gates so that uh, we start building language for quantum information as well but before uh, we begin uh, let's start by uh, reviewing what we did uh, in the last class so let me invite someone to let's say uh, give us summary aapka naam sabita hai ji aap aap bataye so can you let's say uh, tell us the key result from that class about operator that you think was the most important spectral decomposition good so we saw that uh, uh, we can represent uh, general operators you know using matrices but there is a special class of operators we call them normal operators uh for example hermitian operators are normal operators uh, and there is one sub class of hermitian operator which is projector operators so projectors that projects you know uh, a vector from a bigger vector space to a smaller vector space they are also hermitian so they are also normal operator and then there are positive operators uh that have uh, you know positive norms or on the other hand they have positive eigen values so for all uh, those operators uh which we call normal operator they we were able to show uh, actually not so i i told you to check the proof in the book uh but we discuss uh, uh, a theorem which is called spectral decomposition theorem uska by the way there's another name for that it's called uh, eigen value decomposition as well theek hai which actually perhaps uh, makes more sense uh, in terms of name kyunki usme hum karte hi hain uske eigen vectors eigen values find karte hain that's how we write it so it becomes diagonal in its eigen basis so it has another name uh, which is called eigen uh, value decomposition but spectral decomposition is uh, also a common name especially in applied physics and applied mathematics area okay so today uh, i will Uh, keep talking about uh, operators and uh, we will uh, review some of uh, uh, other theorems that are going to be useful uh, uh, in our course and then i'll briefly discuss postulate three again i'll have much more to say about postulate three later on but today i'll just give uh, a short description and then uh, we will also start talking about operator functions because uh, uh, now we don't need operators always but sometimes we need to define functions on operators as well for example cosine of an operator or logarithm of an operator and so on and uh, we will see that uh, not in general but at least for normal operators uh, we will be able to uh, have a way of finding functions of operators and then uh, i will introduce one very important operator function uh, trace and along the way i'll you know today start talking about qubit and gates which are sort of the work horse of uh, uh, quantum computers so let's begin by introducing uh, uh, one key thing let me put on this thing as well because this might make it a bit easier all right so i'm going to introduce another definition another operator so it's called outer product the so outer product of two operators is an operator that maps let's say a vector v in a vector space v 
to another vector w in some other vector space w of course this vector space can uh, be this vector space itself then it would be transformation from this vector to another vector in the same vector space but in general we can go from one vector space to another vector space and uh, the operator to do this is going to be represented by this thing so this uh, you know special combination of this uh, uh, cat operator and what we call the dual of it is the this bra operator v if we put it put them together like this not like this over there which we call inner product this is what we call outer product and with this we can transform uh, from v to w this is the definition of this operator that this is an operator which takes us from v to w yeah you can look right here and say that this is an operator that takes us from v to w but in general you know this is something that takes us from this space to that space so for example if there is a general vector you know v prime which you want to take there and see uh, you know uh, how much of this uh, is you no know, along w so what i can do i can take uh, the inner product of this with this operator so this would be this thing and this is just a number you can say that this is some you know projection or part of this vector along that vector so we go from this vector to this vector and this is the component and um, we can also think about a matrix representation for this as well for example this is uh, a column vector and this is the conjugate transpose of this which is a row vector so when you multiply this column vector with this thing you get a matrix which would be square if they both have same dimension but this would be rectangular if they have different dimension i'll give a, a couple of examples later but this actually gives us another way of representing linear operators we can represent linear operator using outer products like this that uh, i can define the relationship let's say omega i by the way writing again and again this bracket and this bracket and then vj this is hard so a lot of people just put an x for this and that's what i'm also going to be doing so when you see an x this actually means you know this uh, uh, cat vector and then this bra vector so you can also use this this is a little bit easier when we are working uh, a little bit quickly so this operator is uh, an outer product operator that takes the basis vector vj to the basis vector wi of this vector space so using this we can now represent any operator a in this form where these coefficients can be found let's say if i multiply this with some uh, omega i prime from the right with some uh, vj prime and over here i will have some ij aij so omega i prime omega i vj vj prime now this is a delta function this is a delta function and they will both be equal to 1 only when i is equal to i prime so it mean that uh, this is equal to a i j prime so these coefficients are essentially the uh, expectation value of this operator between these two basis vector now this representation is can be used for all operators they don't have to be normal operators that's important so this is very general any linear operator can be represented like this just as any linear operator can be re represented as a matrix so matrix representation and outer product representation of operators is uh, 
it is for all linear operators. The spectral representation, however, is only valid for normal operators. Okay, so that's why we will see this representation uh, much more common. And this also have another additional advantage that we can just choose one basis and we can represent all operators in that basis, in, in the given vector spaces. Because uh, this basis has no relationship to, for example, the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of this operator. A. On the other hand, when you are, want to work out the uh, eigenvalue decomposition or spectral decomposition, you have to work out the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of this operator. Let me give you a couple of examples. So for example, as an example, suppose I have this uh, poly X operator, and this has actually many forms, some where you will see data like this X, sometimes Sigma X, and I'll mostly be using just a capital X, okay? So this is an operator which in matrix form can be written uh, like this. And suppose I want to represent it uh, in this outer product form. And uh, since uh, this is operating on a two-dimensional vector space, so that two-dimensional vector space, even if it is complex, I can take uh, these two basis vector. For example, let me define this zero and let me define this one basis vector like this. So this is one basis vector, this is the other basis vector in the two-dimensional vector space that it is operating on. Since it's taking the two-dimensional uh, vector to the two-dimensional uh, vector and they're both complex, so V and W, they're both the same. So this is my basis vector. I can use another one as well, but let's say I use this as a basis vector. So these are in uh, Euclidean space, you can imagine them to be, you know, these orthogonal vectors. Okay, now, how do I find these numbers a, i, j? For them, uh, I can, I will have to compute this zero, x, zero, which is, this zero is one, zero, x is zero, one, one, zero, and this zero is one, zero. If you work it out, you will see that the answer is zero. Because zero, one into one, zero is zero, one zero into one zero is one. So this is zero one. And then when you multiply one zero with zero one, you will get zero. So the coefficient of uh, zero zero is zero. Similarly, uh, you can work out x zero one, where this is one zero, this, this. So you have zero one, and then you will see that you will get one. So similarly, one, zero would be one and one X one would be zero, which mean I can write my X operator as like this. So in case when zero zero or one one wale outer products and unke coefficient zero hai, or the two and one hai. so you have one, you have one, so zero one, one zero. So this is the uh, operator in the outer product form uh, according to this definition. Perfect. So similarly, uh, we can work out Y and X, you know, operators as well. All right. No, this is spectral decomposition. Spectral decomposition is necessary that you first find the eigenvectors, find the eigenvalues, find the eigenvalues, and then write them from there. We have written the operator on its own basis. So these two, we know that there are no eigenvectors. The last time you have done this, you have seen that there are no eigenvectors. So this is not necessary for the basis of the eigenvectors. You can choose any basis you want. You, you can choose eigenvectors as well if you like. But you can choose any other basis that is orthonormal. Okay. Ah. So actually, there's a way of directly writing, writing like this as well, because 
this operator x zero one one zero this can be expanded like this as well so this x i can write it as zero one zero one as Zero one zero zero plus zero zero one zero, and you can check that this thing is uh, one zero. Uh, sorry, this is the the first one. This column vector. ये रो वेक्टर है सो वन जीरो जीरो वन 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 जीरो 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 वन जीरो सो दिस मैट्रिक्स इज एक्चुअली दिस जीरो वन एंड सिमिलरली यू कैन चेक दैट दिस वन जीरो इज एक्चुअली जीरो जीरो वन जीरो सो दिस आई कैन डायरेक्टली राइट एज जीरो वन प्लस वन जीरो Okay, and you can actually see it another way as well. This is uh, uh, an operator when you apply it on a vector one zero, which is this vector zero. You can work it out, and you will see that you get this zero one, which is one. And it's telling you the same thing that if I uh, bring in uh, a zero vector from the right, zero dot zero would be one. I'll get one because one dot zero is zero. Similarly. This x converts this one vector to zero vector. Okay, and I think this is uh, perhaps the right time that we introduce another uh, sort of uh, nomenclature because we would mostly be working with uh, two-dimensional uh, uh, quantum system. And for example, this operator is also working in two-dimensional vector space. So a two uh, a two level a two dimensional quantum system, you can think of as you know having a quantum system which has two level. For example, uh, uh, a spin half particle which is isolated from everything else and is placed in a let's say magnetic field. It has two energy levels up and down. Or uh, or it, this this could be like two levels out of bunch of other levels, but uh, you have decided to operate between these two levels. For example. you are sending in uh, um, electromagnetic waves of frequency which is equal to the difference of these two levels and you are only measuring the uh, electromagnetic waves of you know energy difference equal to these two levels in neglecting all the other levels then essentially you are working with a two level system so in reality actually there is no two level system uh, but uh, in principle uh, uh, we can take any two levels out of uh, a multitude of levels and say that we are only going to work with these two levels so this is our two level quantum system and uh, building a quantum computer is essentially uh, turning uh, this uh, ideality into uh, reality that can we isolate two levels of a multi level uh, quantum system and just work with them uh, that's all about building a quantum computer so in theory we are just going to assume these two levels because uh, most of the time unless uh, we are working with you know uh, noisy system so this two level quantum system is what we call a qubit so we can call these levels anything we want let's say this is 1 this is 2 but the general convention is this we call the lower level as zero and the upper level is one and uh, it, the state of such a quantum system can be represented then as a linear combination of these two levels and the major difference of this two level quantum system and the classical bit is that in classical system uh, our system can either be in the this level or that level right it can be either zero or one but in quantum uh, system we can also have a superposition of these two state our system can be uh, in a state like this so our qubit can be in a state like this of course um, uh, when we measure we either only going to find the system here or here 
But before measurement, our system is in a superposition state. And that's what we call the qubit. You, Samu? मैं आपका सॉरी सवाल यहीं पे काट दूसरी की हम ऐसा नहीं करना चाह रहे जो हम टू लेवल क्वांटम सिस्टम के साथ काम करते हैं इसलिए नहीं करते कि क्लासिकली हमारे पास टू लेवल सिस्टम था तो इट वुड बी इजियर टू डू द मैथ यू नो प्रॉपरेट विद दैट दैट एब्सोल्युटली नॉट नॉट द रीजन इन प्रिंसिपल वी कैन डेफिनेटली वर्क विद लेट्स थ्री लेवल सिस्टम वी विल हैव मोर वेज ऑफ यू नो रिप्रेजेंटिंग इंफॉर्मेशन इंफॉर्मेशन एंड वी कैन पुट मोर इंफॉर्मेशन इन टू स्मॉलर पीसेज राइट अगर आप क्यूबिक की बजाय लेट से you were with the try data quarter data whatever you want so you can have uh, more information in fewer number of those bits right but constructing such a system experimentally is extremely hard working with two levels you uh, let's say you picture agar aap isko banana cha rahe hain using uh, uh, points so you have you know bunch of points each point has uh, let's say three levels or two levels or whatever levels and then you have lot of lasers from these sides that are trying to interact with them and you're trying to talk them within then uh, already it's very complicated to work with you know a couple of frequencies to read in and put data in when you add at the level you essentially multiply your number of lasers and the number of devices that you have to put data in and to read out and the benefit that you are going to get out is very minimal okay no not much that's the point not much more for example if you have four level system so uh, you only increase your system two times but you increase your complexity many many times similarly when you have superconducting quantum system let's say there are 10 qubits on the chip and there are already like 20 30 wires going into the chip and uh, you are trying to communicate with one qubit at one frequency and not disturb the other qubit because the electromagnetic waves you know they spread out and they talk to other thing as well and if you you know instead of uh, two level three or four level then you have disturbance and the noise uh, a lot in the system you need many more wires and uh, also the noise in the qubits increase very much so this is the simplest system and definitely we are not working with the two qubit system just because you know classically there were two qubits because experimentally this is the most feasible okay that's the reason all right so this you know state uh, has uh, these two constant number a and b they're both complex numbers which mean that you need four real numbers to characterize this state even though this is a two dimensional hilbert space because you need only two basis vector to represent any general state ji because we now have the superposition so the one thing is this that uh, फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगर आप कोई काम करना चाहते हैं सो इंस्टेड ऑफ वर्किंग विद जीरो एंड वन सेपरेटली यू कैन वर्क विद दम इन अ कम्बिनेशन ओके सो एंड एक्चुअली टू टू नो द एडवांटेजेस वी हैव टू गो टू क्वांटम कंप्यूटिंग एंड सी वट आर दलगोरिज्म वट आर द प्रॉब्लम दैट वी कैन सॉल्व फास्टर एंड दिस कोर्स अनफॉर्चुनेटली इज नॉट गोइंग टू बी अबाउट दैट Okay. Uh, there might be a course in summer uh, on quantum computing. I'm, I'm not sure right now, but uh, if there is, then that course will address this thing. Or uh, there, there's one of my course available online that actually talks just about this thing. What's the advantage? So you can look into that. All right. So this is a qubit state, which is superposition, and this a and b are complex numbers. And uh, in general, we require four real numbers. to represent this state but we can see easily that there is a constraint that a square mod plus b mod square has to be 1 so essentially we are left with three real variables to represent this state because the fourth variable is constrained by this condition and uh, uh, let's try to uh, develop a pictorial representation of this qubit and for that uh, we can write this a let's say some R one exponential 
iota let me write some phi one and b as r2 exponential iota phi two this is called polar representation of complex numbers where you separate the magnitude and the phase part of the complex number so in this case we can see easily that uh, if i put in them here i get r1 square plus r2 square is equal to 1 so this gives me an idea that these two variables are related the magnitudes are related and let's say i can define this r as some cos of angle and let me call that angle theta by 2 and this r2 then is the sine of the same angle and let's call that angle theta by 2 i can call it theta this like no difference of principle or anything but calling it theta by 2 uh makes thing bit uh, you know nicer so that's why by convention we call this angle theta by 2 all right and uh, and let's let's see the range of this angle since these r1 and r2 have to be uh, positive numbers because magnitudes are positive numbers this theta by 2 has to be constrained within 90 degree right theta by 2 should be from 0 to 90 degree which mean that theta should be between 0 and 180 degree simply because this r1 and r2 are positive real numbers agar aap theta by 2 ko 90 super leke jate hain then one of them becomes negative all right so let's put this a b in this state and then this psi becomes uh i can take this exponential iota phi 1 common so here we will be left with cosine theta 0 plus sine theta by 2 exponential iota phi 2 minus phi 1 kyunki maine phi 1 common le liya and let me call that phi 1 so i have rewritten this state like this now still there are three parameters you can see there is a theta parameter there is phi parameter and there is phi 1 parameter but this part doesn't play any role when we do the measurements because when we take its magnitude the measurement probability of zero is going to be proportional to mod square of cos uh, theta by 2 and uh, the probability of measuring one is going to be proportional to this mod square and this will simply Uh, go out because when you multiply it with the conjugate exponential root of phi one multiplies with exponential minus root of phi one, so it's gone. So from here we see that for all practical purposes we can represent our qubit with only just this part of the state. But you do have to remember one thing that when we have multiple qubits and then if individual qubits have their you know total phase, then we won't be able to neglect. But if we have only one qubit in our quantum computer. then we can neglect this part all right so this state has uh, uh, these two parameter theta and phi where theta is restricted from 0 to 180 degree and there's no restriction on phi phi can be anywhere from 0 to 360 degrees and we can use that to represent this state uh, uh, geometrically on what we call a block sphere using spherical coordinates let's say this is x axis y axis z axis and let me draw a sphere so my state has a magnitude 1 because when i take the total magnitude cos square plus sin square is 1 so this is a state that lives on the surface of the block sphere and it has an angle with the z axis which is equal to theta and it has an angle in the x y plane which is equal to uh phi now i haven't given the transformation from here to here uh that we might work out later on but we can you know geometrically represent this state using spherical coordinate like this this a correspondence that we all can agree that okay we will use this thing to geometrically represent it just for visual purposes okay and to make a sense out of this so when theta is 0 we are here when theta is 90 we are here 
when phi is zero, we are in the xc plane. When phi is 90, we are in the yz plane and so on. And let's just see that uh, what is the state zero? If psi is zero, this corresponds to theta by two being, uh, theta being zero, right? Because if theta is zero, cos zero is one, sine zero is zero. So this corresponds to theta being zero degrees. So this is my state zero. What about psi being one? Psi being one mean that uh, theta is 180 degree, so that uh, cos 90 is zero and sine 91, but also I have to have phi zero. So this means that theta is 180 degree and phi has to be zero. So that's a state that is down here. This is my state one. And uh, let's uh, discuss a couple of other states, which are sort of important. So general psi, theta, this angle phi, and let's Think about this state, zero plus one divided by one over square root two. Let's see what this state corresponds. This is a very common state that we will see at many places. By the way, if you write it uh, uh, using uh, matrices, this zero is uh, one, zero. This one is zero, one, all multiplied by one over under root two. And this becomes one, one, one over under root two. You might have seen it when you were trying to find out eigenvectors of one of the poly operators. So this has actually a special name. This is called plus. Sabita, you have a question? So while we are here, let me just discuss another state. So this is also a very common state. This actually mean corresponds to this one minus one. We call it minus state because of this minus sign. Okay, so let's see if I want to represent this plus state on the block sphere, what it would correspond to. So we see that this is one over under root two, this is one over under two, if you compare it there, it means that uh, uh, theta must be 45 degrees, 90 degrees. Because if theta is 90 degrees, theta by two would be 45 and cos 45, sine 45, both would be one over under two. And what would be phi? Phi should be zero. So this is the vector plus this state. And similarly, this corresponds to theta being 90 degree because this is one over two, but this is a minus sign. So which means phi must be 180 degree because exponential iota 180 degree is minus one. So this is the minus state along uh, negative x axis. So this is minus state. Is he going to be eigenvector kiss kate? X kate? So X probably can be written like this as well. So this is the eigenvalue decomposition of X operator. Because it's eigenvalue for this uh, vector was minus one and for this vector it was plus one. And you can see that the eigenvalue decomposition is different from the uh, decomposition in zero one basis that we used earlier. Okay. Similarly, there are two other states that uh, we are usually going to use. This basis, by the way, is also sometime used to represent uh, uh, our qubit states, two level system state, and this is called Hadamard basis for reasons that will you know become clear later on so there is one basis which is uh, this zero one basis this is sometimes called computational basis because normally we do measurements in this zero one basis so that's why it's called computational basis 
this is hadamard basis this is also two orthogonal vectors you can check that they are perpendicular to each other as well there is another very important basis i don't know if it has any name or not but this is this plus i vector we call it this is uh, 1 over under root 2 0 plus iota 1 and minus i vector 0 minus i 1 and these are actually eigen vectors of uh, uh, i don't know y operator you can recall this is uh, 1 iota and this is 1 minus iota y operator yes yeah, so y so if on the block sphere this corresponds to the plus i state and this corresponds to minus i state okay and just for uh, comparison the y matrix which is 0 minus i i 0 you can write it in outer product form like this and you can write it equivalently in spectral decomposition like this where these are the names of its two eigen vectors defined over there similarly the z operator which is defined as 1 0 0 minus 1 is called in the computational basis it can be written like this and uh, incidentally these zero ones are also its eigen vectors so this is the same iski jo spectral decomposition hai wo bhi yahi hai okay any questions so far ha so uh, unfortunately no we usually work in uh, the, the convention in quantum computing to working with block sphere where uh, visually the perpendicular vectors are not perpendicular this is a good observation you know this plus i and minus i they actually are perpendicular they are orthogonal basically they are not perpendicular because they are not in real space uh, and uh, if you talk about uh, you know sort of equivalent angle the angle is half of this simply because the transformation that we define over there was with theta by 2 if we had defined with theta then uh, we would be just limited to one hemisphere of this one and over there uh, we could uh, uh, we might have come up with something where the angles are preserved नहीं हम वो सारे ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन पे डिफरेंट हो जाती है ना आप सारे डिफरेंट डिफरेंट जगह पे आ रहे हैं ऑल राइट सो एनी क्वेश्चन सो फॉर अली रजा समझ आ रही है आपको जो आपने मिस किया वो कैसे करेंगे पूरा क्या कर रहे थे लगा कि क्या क्लास नहीं है आज अच्छा अच्छा अब मुझे लगता है सोते बहुत देर से सही है ऑल राइट ओके सो लेट मी नो गेट बैक टू द पॉस्टुलेट्स अगेन सो लेट्स लीव इट जस्ट लिटिल बिट हेयर फॉर अ वाइल हमने अब भी देखा कि there are two fundamental laws of quantum mechanics number one the state of a closed quantum system is given by a ray in a hilbert space the second law stated that each observable corresponds to a hermitian operator the third law that we discussed last time as well and uh, let me 
write it again uh, says this that all evolutions are unitary in quantum in of closed quantum system that the state of a system at time t2 relates to the state of the system at time t1 by a unitary operator that might depend on t1 and t2 but whatever it is it's a unitary operator unitary operator has uh, uh, this important property property that its eigen values are exponential uh, plus minus theta whatever because their uh, the magnitude of the eigen values is one which means that if this is one of the eigen state of this operator this just multiplies it with exponential iota phi and if it is not then of course i can express this psi as a, a linear super uh, a linear you know sum of eigen states of this u and then then i can multiply each eigen vector with exponential of the same eigen value and i can find what the output state is but this is one fundamental law that for a closed system all evolutions are unitary these evolutions uh, you know could be in time or these evolutions could be in space uh, for example a vector precise uh, you know precessing uh, around something in space and you can say that there is an equivalent formulation of this uh, third law which is to say that the state and by the way quantum physics doesn't tell us what that unitary is that's important to dis uh, distinguish it tells us that the evolution is unitary but it doesn't say that what unitary operator would uh, you have to be you know using in order to evolve a state in a given physical system that's why initially when we were talking about what quantum mechanics is and i was referring to this thing as a framework in which you can express theories now when we come to theories that the job of a theorist or a physicist in a sense is just to find that unitary for a given physical system for example you are trying to come up with a theory of um, uh, chromodynamics your job is to postulate the unitary or her, the hamiltonian of the system okay if you take this hamiltonian you can explain the dynamic of the system but all of that theories are being developed under the assumption that the evolutions are unitary of closed quantum system so that's why this quantum mechanics is essentially an overarching framework that tells us you know uh, how the theories have to be such for an equivalent you know uh, inter uh, statement of this theorem is this that uh, the evolution the state evolution of a closed quantum system is given by this equation this schrodinger equation so they're both equivalent so here uh this is the hamiltonian uh, of the system this is uh, uh, the hermitian operator it doesn't tell us what hamiltonian to use for the system that's the job of a theory and uh, for complicated system you know it's always a tricky business to come up uh, with a hamiltonian that explains the physics of that system but that's something uh, that we have to work out keeping in mind that whatever hamiltonian we come up with have to explain the physics of the system according to this equation because this is the overarching framework of quantum physics that is now imposed on us and we can relate the two actually very easily uh, i know you have done this many times so let me just write it so the uh, i can work it out like this that this is given by the hamiltonian operator multiplied by t2 minus t1 psi of t and this uh, as you have a problem actually even more general problem uh, in uh, uh, your homework that any exponential iota time hermitian matrix is always a unitary so this is the unitary operator so this unitary operator given above is related to the hamiltonian of the system like this i can just write delta t over here okay and, and so and the job is you know just finding the hamiltonian or equivalently you can you know try to find the the action for a given uh, system because action and hamiltonian are also related because there is an equivalent formulation to path integral 
quantum physics, but it essentially boils down to this. That's equivalent to this. So you can come through uh, what we call Lagrangian or action of the system, or you can come through Hamiltonian. The problem remains the same. All right. So I don't have much more to say about this uh, right now, but uh, we will be discussing this thing in more detail, especially for open quantum system, because uh, when we talk about open quantum system, then uh, things become more complicated. Let me give you some common Hamiltonian for two by two system. Hamiltonian of two by two system. Actually, let me just write from now on qubit, because qubit is just a short for a two by two uh, system or a two level quantum system. You can actually show that the identity poly X, poly Y, and poly Z, they form an orthonormal uh, basis for uh, uh, two by two matrices, which means that any Hamiltonian, any two by two Hamiltonian can always be written as some linear combination of these alpha, beta, gamma, some, you know, eta, C. So if you know the uh, action of Hamiltonians that are given by X, Y, Z and identity, you can work out the action of the Hamiltonian of a general two by two Hamiltonian. Another way, if you uh, want to understand the, uh, you know, uh, any uh, general transformation of your qubit, that can be understood in terms of the uh, action of i, x, y, and t. Okay, so let me then just discuss uh, uh, these one by one. So suppose my Hamiltonian is just identity. This means that my unitary operator would be exponential minus iota over h cut identity delta t. So this means that the state of any qubit at some later time t is given by exponential minus iota delta t over h cut psi of t. Okay. So first of all, we see one important thing that if I have my qubit, let's say, it has some initial state psi. And I don't do anything on it. It doesn't mean that the state in absolute sense remains the same. Because there is this phase factor which is accumulating as time is passing. Right? Even though it will have no measurable impact. Because when I measure my uh, qubit state, uh, this is just going to factor out, just like that global phase. So even when the, we are doing nothing to the qubit, the qubit is uh, accumulating global phase on itself. But fortunately, it has no measurable impact. And let's now see if, what if my Hamiltonian is just the poly x. It, Physically, it might correspond to something, okay? There might be uh, an elect if you think about uh, uh, the spin system, there might be some electromagnetic wave with certain frequency which is matching this thing. So let's say there is some physical system which can be modeled with a Hamiltonian given by X operator, which is just this, zero, one, one, zero. So the unitary operator corresponding to this would be exponential minus uh, iota over h cut x delta t. This is the uh, unitary operation that is happening on that qubit. So. Uh, I now have to work out its exponential, but 
we haven't discussed how to work out the operator functions so i want to actually discuss what it comes to after working out this exponential and this exponential now has an operator in it similarly i also want to work out the impact of applying uh, a unit tree with the hamiltonian given by y and z so let's uh, hold this thing here and discuss the how we can evaluate operator function then i'll come back to this problem okay so operator functions if our operator is normal then we can write it like this as its eigen values and eigen vectors right now i'm using this a for eigen vectors and uh, it's a normal operator so eigen vectors form an ordo normal basis uh and this is called eigen value decomposition or spectral decomposition by the way some people would also write it like this okay and uh, okay so before i do let me just give you another visual uh of how, what does does this mean so if we i open it this becomes like this a1 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 a2 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 and so on right up to the last one let's say an an Yeah. Now, this thing is a, a row a column vector. This thing is a row vector. So let me convert it into matrices. So A one, and this is uh, my column vector A one, and then this is my row vector, which is essentially. the complex conjugate of this thing okay so let me put an a1 dagger here so the next one is a2 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 dagger and so on everybody gets this point now let me try to put all of this in a single you know matrix form the reason is this that this a1 can be thought of as multiplying this whole column or i since this is a scalar number i can think of it multiplying the whole row it's the same thing and i can represent it like this a1 column a2 column a n column and then a1 a2 all the way to a n and zero everywhere and this row this is a1 dagger a2 dagger all the way to a n this is actually completely equivalent to this thing you can think of this as outer product representation and this has matrix representation and you can check that when you work it out you get exactly the same thing because the first row first column a1 is multiplying this one because everything else is zero and this is multiplying the first row and we can also check that uh, if uh, this is uh, uh, since these are all uh, orthogonal as well are the normal so this is a unitary matrix actually because so ye jo vector hai aur ye vector ye normalized bhi hai aur or the normal bhi hai orthogonal bhi hai तो अगर मैं इसको इसके साथ मल्टीप्लाई करूं तो क्या होगा जो ये जैसे पहली रो जो है पहले कॉलम से मल्टीप्लाई होगी तो आई गेट वन क्योंकि ये पहली रो और पहला कॉलम सेम है और चूंकि नॉर्मल वेक्टर है तो आई गेट वन जो जब ये पहली रो दूसरे तमाम वेक्टर में मल्टीप्लाई गेट जीरो बिकॉज दिस वैक्टर इज नॉर्मल टू ऑल ऑफ दिस यू इज अटी मैट्रिक्स 
So I have been able to expand this A as sort of U. Let me call it some lambda U tag. Okay, so this is a, a matrix containing vectors which are orthonormal to each other. So this is a unitary matrix and this is its just dagger. Now this thing has this advantage that if I take it square, this would mean that I multiply u lambda u dagger, u lambda u dagger, but this is its inverse. So this is identity. So this becomes u lambda square u dagger. Now this lambda square is very easy to find because this is a1 square, a2 square, a3 square, and all the way to an square. Similarly, if you want to find a cube, this is u lambda cube u dagger. So it means any polynomial function of this operator is essentially u polynomial function of eigenvalues u dagger. So and or and any other function that you can expand as power of something, you can then write it as f of a as u f of lambda u dagger. Where f of lambda means that the function has to be of individual eigenvalues. For example, you want to find cosine of a matrix, of a normal matrix. So it means that you find its eigenvectors and you find u u dagger, you find its eigenvalues, and then you prepare uh, a diagonal matrix and then each entry should be cosine of the eigenvalue. And that would be the cosine of that operator. If you want to find the exponential of uh, some operator, this is u exponential of eigenvalues, u dagger. And if you want to express this thing in uh, uh, the outer product form, it means that f of a is function of eigenvalues and this outer product. So this is a key thing of recognizing that matrices hai, they contain eigenvectors. Or if you have normalized it, then they become an orthonormal uh, set of vectors. Or when you take dagger, ke lete hai, you, you get identity. Because same eigenvector will give you one and different eigenvector will give you inner product zero and you will have identity, which means that this essentially ye jo, uh, spectral decomposition, hai, which is also eigenvalue decomposition, has orthonormal eigenvalues, orthonormal. Perfect. So now we know how to find uh, the functions of operators. I can go back to what we were doing earlier. And now we can find out this operator. Because you have already worked out the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this operator x. So can you tell me what were the eigenvectors of this? Because I will first need to write that u here. The eigenvectors of x. Uh, uh, 1, 1, or 1 over under 2, what is it? Or eigenvalue kya hai? Huh. So, but what I can do, I can write it one by one as well. But let's write them both together. So one, one, one minus one, then exponential minus iota over h cut. Or pelly again, when you have one, so you get just uh, delta t, zero, zero, exponential my plus iota over h cut delta t and then it's the inverse thing so one 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 minus one and then there's a half over uh, one over under two from here and one over two from here is one over two so this is a matrix that you will get and if you work it out and actually there's an easier way of uh, doing it as well 
let me do that here quickly as well so you can also alternatively you can compute this thing like this as well u of t is exponential minus iota over h cut delta t plus an exponential minus iota h cut delta t with plus minus minus right ye maine wo spectral outer product form mein likha dono ye dono eigen vector hai eigen value plus 1 becomes cosine theta by 2 minus iota sin theta by 2 minus iota sin theta by 2 ab work exponential ko na open kar lena aapne where i have defined theta by 2 as uh, delta t over h cut so this is essentially the minus iota theta by 2 x so this is if you look at it this is essentially a rotation operator around x axis by angle theta because if i look at the block sphere this is rotation operator in block sphere if there is this state psi and when you apply this eigen vector or this and uh, it can easily be shown that if i write it you know as uh, cosine theta by 2 whatever the way the state would i so after this application the state is rotated around x axis by an angle theta so that's why this also called a rotation operator around x axis theta okay So, and you can control the value of the theta by controlling the time delta t that you have applied your you know external pulse which is applying for the time that you are applying your hamiltonian x on the qubit okay and uh, this can be expanded to write it like this as well cosine theta by 2 identity minus iota sin theta by 2x because you know identity one for one one so this is multiplying cosine theta and uh, the x operator which is one one here is multiplying minus iota sin theta by 2 so that exponential has been evaluated like this and i can also see that i can apply the x gate as well or x operation if i choose my theta to be 180 degree then uh, sin 90 would be 1 and cos 90 would be 0 and this would essentially be equal to applying this minus iota x gate but we can apply a general theta rotation or x gate by choosing this delta t similarly the exponential minus iota now i'm not going through all of that trouble y is equal to rotation around y axis by angle theta and this actually comes out to be cosine theta by 2 identity minus iota sin theta by 2 y this can be written as cos theta by 2 minus sin theta by 2 sin theta by 2 cos theta by 2 because this rotates the state around y axis by this angle similarly exponential minus iota Theta by two. This is actually the easiest because we just have to compute exponential of minus iota theta by two. Z is one zero zero minus one. So this is exponential. This is already diagonal. So it's just exponential 
minus iota theta by 2 0 0 exponential iota theta by 2 or this is uh, cos theta by 2 identity minus iota sin theta by 2 c. So these operations that we can do on our single qubit, these unitary operations, they're called gate operations in quantum computing language. So we have uh, an or x gate, that we give in some state psi and we get some state psi out. We have our y gate of angle theta. We have our z gate. We have identity gate. And we can have some other discrete gates as well. Okay, so these are like gates with continuous parameter. You can choose theta, whatever you want. Uh, but in most of the quantum computers, they have actually optimize the computers to perform uh, gate operations or unitary operation for some discrete set of values. So we have discrete gates. So fundamentally, quantum operations are continuous. But if you fix the parameter to only some of the values, then you can get discrete set of gates. And actually, uh, so these gates are also used, but there, there are other single qubit gates which are uh, more common than these gates. And they are, one of them is uh, what we call the X gate. So X gate up to a phase you can see is just uh, this rotation or X rotation, but by choosing theta to be 180 degree, because when you choose theta 180 degree, this is zero, sorry, this is one, this is zero. So you get minus iota X. Similarly, we can apply Y gate and we can apply Z gate. And let's see what they, these gates do. So an X gate, which is represented by 0, 1, 1, 0, when you give it input 0, it gives you output 1. And if the input state is 1 state, it gives you output state 0 state. And we can actually see it on the block sphere as well. If there's a 0 state here, X gate is essentially rotation around X axis by 180 degrees. So what should we get? If I rotate this state about this x-axis by 180 degrees, this state goes from here to here. This becomes one. And the one state, when it is rotated by 180 degrees, goes to state zero. Similarly, this y uh, gate, when you give it state zero, this will rotate it around y-axis. So what you should do, you should get this state. Uh, you can work it out to see what we get. So Y gate is uh, zero iota minus iota zero and zero state is one zero. So zero minus iota is minus iota zero one. So I get this state, but with this phase minus one, minus iota. So because if it's, it's the same thing as X gate, right? I, I rotate the zero state around Y axis, I still reach this thing, but with this phase, additional phase. Similarly, uh, the one will go to the zero with some phase. This Z gate is a little bit different because if you give it zero, it gives you output zero. <laughs> and it should do, right? If this is state zero, and this is already along Z axis, if I rotate it around Z axis by 180, it's not going anywhere. But this one state, which is here, where this goes to minus one state. And uh, because it's picking a phase, if I, this is my state and I rotate it around the inverted axis by 180 degree, I get a phase of minus one, which is also apparent from its structure as well. Because this Z is a matrix uh, 0, 1, minus 1, 0. Uh, this Z is, huh, Z is So Z is 1, minus 1, so it doesn't say anything to 0. It gives a minus sign to 1 state. 
so these are some of the gates and actually there are a couple of other gates that uh, we will be uh, uh, mostly using when we talk about the single qubit gate operation any questions so far okay if not let me introduce one last and perhaps one of the most important uh, uh, function of operator mm -hmm. अगर आप लेट से वो स्पिन की बात कर रहे हैं इज डिफरेंट एंड द फेज इज स्टार्टिंग फेज इज डिफरेंट क्योंकि जो पल्स हम बेचते हैं किसी भी सर्किट को it has many parameters one of the fundamental is the polarization ka electric field or magnetic field ki orientation kya hai jo qubit hai uske hisab se and plus what is the starting phase so ye jo x y z different operations are they differ in these things ji ji wo hum usually jo milta hai ha so it's a uh, uh, known physical implementation okay so let's introduce the last operation on operator and that's what we call the trace operator a trace operation or trace function and we it's very simply defined trace of any operator a is essentially sum of its diagonal elements when it is diagonalized in some basis okay so agar aap matrix ki baat kare so you have kyunki hum kisi bhi operator ko matrix ki form mein likh sakte hain na right 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 9 10 10 so its trace will be 1 5 10 okay so the trace is uh, this thing and uh, mathematically speaking you can write trace like this as well all you have to do is uh put your operator in state i i and sum over all i because this is nothing but an expression for ai to give you an idea agar ye matrix hai to essentially pehle aap ise ye hai row vector 1 0 0 so ye so let's say this is my first basis vector this is my first basis vector so a ko agar iske darmiyan mein rakhein what we will get we will get one theek hai na kyunki jab isko aap isse karenge we will pick up this thing and uh, this thing and this thing ha ye 1 2 3 1 so iska answer aa jayega 1 2 3 and when you multiply with this thing kyunki ye dono zero hai you will get one so for the second element 0 1 0 so you multiply you put it in the second eigen vector you get 5 out and similarly for minus 10 you can get minus 10 out so this is the definition of this thing so that this trace has several nice properties you can uh, check right away number one is that it's cyclic which mean that the trace of ab is the same as trace of ba can you reason that why it should be even if a b are not uh, commutative matrices kyun nahi rata bil ke when you multiply two matrices jo diagonal pe product ka answer hai wo wohi rehta hai beshak a b ho ya b ho agar wo commutative nahi hai to off diagonal element change hote hain but not the diagonal so that's why trace is cyclic you can show more regressively as well but i don't think that we need that it's direct intuitive proof right there they are linear trace is linear trace of sum of operators is trace of individual operators which is the same thing because when you add them your diagonal elements are corresponding add hote hain so you can uh, get out the diagonal element first and then add them you will get the same thing so linearity also means this thing actually c a ka jo trace hai 
it is equal to c times trace of a so these two properties and then there is actually another very important property it's invariance under similarity transformation सिमिलैरिटी ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन होती है अगर कोई हम मैट्रिक्स लें ना कोई ऑपरेटर लें और उसको लेफ्ट से अगर किसी यूनिट से अप्लाई करें और राइट से उस यूनिट के डेगेट से कर दें तो इस टाइप की जितनी भी ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन है वी कॉल देम सिमिलैरिटी ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन फॉर एग्जाम्पल आइगन वैल्यू ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन जो हमने वो स्पेक्ट्रल डीकम्स में पढ़ी है दैट इज ऑल्सो सिमिलैरिटी ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन बट देर देर आर मोर देन दैट सो दी प्रू this property is this that the trace of this and trace of this remains the same and let's see how it's actually very quick to check iska jab trace lenge trace of u a u dagger this is going to be equal to trace of in dono ki main jagah change kar sakta hu right kyunki ye cyclic hai na so ye u a ki jagah main likh deta hu a u and then u u dagger is identity so this is equal to trace of a ये तीनों प्रॉपर्टीज ना हमें काफी फायदा रहता है व्हेन वी हैव दिस कॉम्प्लिकेटेड ऑपरेटर्स एंड वी हैव टू फाइंड ट्रेस वी विल सी ट्रेस इज गोइंग टू बी वन ऑफ द फंडामेंटल ऑपरेशन व्हेन वी इंट्रोड्यूस द डेंसिटी मैट्रिक्स लैंग्वेज फॉर क्वांटम फिजिक्स टू स्टडी ओपन क्वांटम सिस्टम दिस इज गोइंग टू बी वेरी यूजफुल देयर इज वन लास्ट प्रॉपर्टी एक्चुअली ऑफ दिस ट्रेस दैट इज गोइंग टू शो अप अगेन एंड अगेन एंड दिस इज दैट what is the trace of this thing trace of some operator a operating on multiplying with another operator so this is an operator right anything that is written like this is an operator so two operators are multiplying where one operator has this uh, particular thing with uh, this uh, distinction that this psi has norm 1 so this is a unit vector this is a unit they are unit vector which means that they represent some state of a physical system so what's its state so we can easily find its state by thinking like this so this is some hilbert space aur usme ye kahin pe psi hai okay so what you do you think of an orthonormal basis for this you know vector space lekin wo aise orthonormal basis aapne choose ki hai ki uska jo pehla vector hai na wo aapne psi rakh diya so it's an ordo normal basis like this psi 2 3 and so on and we can do that because you know this is a unit vector so uh we can start adding orthogonal vector one by one and we can construct an ortho uh, ortho normal basis ye jo psi hai ye uska pehla vector ho jaye so now one this is the choice i can now easily find what this should be because ye sare ka sara ek operator hi hai na let me call it some b operator so is trace of b jo hai it's nothing but sum of all you know projections of this b onto the basis vectors so this is you know let me put this b here so b is going to be a psi 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 lekin ye jo product hai this is only true when psi is equal to i kyunki psi jo hai ye hamara pehla unit vector hai when i is equal to psi this is 1 when i is not equal to psi this is 0 so it mean all of this sum is just equal to this thing और ये भी जो कि i psi हो जाएगा जब यहां पे i psi होगा सो दिस इज a psi सो ट्रेस ऑफ a psi psi इज गिवन बाय दिस ये समझ आ गई है बात कि चूंकि i को psi के बराबर होना यहां भी फिर i psi हो गया ऑल अदर प्रोडक्ट्स आर जीरो सो जो सम में खत्म हो गया आई ओनली हैव द फर्स्ट रन जी जी 
जो ट्रेन है उसका कोई नहीं नहीं बिल्कुल है सो इट्स गोइंग टू रिप्रेजेंट यू नो मयरमेंट्स एंड आल्सो द एवोल्यूशन में भी वी विल बी यूजिंग इट सो इट हैज अ वेरी स्ट्रांग फिजिकल मीनिंग नहीं नहीं कोई मेट्रिक्स ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन है मेट्रिक्स ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन में कर रहे हो और वो किसी मेट्रिक्स पे हो रही है ऑटोनॉमल बेसिस पे जिस तरह डिटरमिनेंट हो जाता है बेसिस का जो रेशियो चेंज होने के बाद हो फिजिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलि